it's all over now. Who knows if the lantern ride can still go on after an incident like that, though. Let's ask Lady Mingguang how things are shaping up for the festival this year. Send this report to the Ministry of Civil Affairs and have them delegate each of the tasks on the list to the appropriate departments. Also, be sure to tell them that though the lantern rite may be complicated, everything must be done properly. Hello, Lady Mingguang! It's us again! No, of course not. You are my honored guests, and given the looks of you two, I presume that you're here to celebrate the Lantern Rite? That's right! So what's on the agenda for the festival this year? As always, there will be a variety of activities taking place. Oh, but there is one of particular interest. The Ministry of Civil Affairs is planning a fireworks show this year. It should certainly be worth your time. Releasing Mingxiao Lanterns has always been at the heart of the Lantern Rite. But with all that has occurred in Liyue as of late, I think the people of the city need something to warm their hearts. A feeling of everyone coming together in solidarity. So, I believe that this year calls for a celebration of particular magnificence. Something that would be closer to the hearts of every citizen. We are currently in the process of placing fireworks at various locations all throughout Liyue. We shall choose a timely moment during the festival to set off all the fireworks in unison, allowing the sparkling lights and excitement to resonate with the hearts of the people. Fireworks? But we've already seen fireworks in other places before. <gasps> Is there something special about the fireworks in Liyue? Fireworks were originally developed alongside many other inventions here in Liyue. When our ancestors first created fireworks, they were originally known as firecrackers. Their bright flashes and loud sounds were often used for warding off beasts or as warning signals to other people. In those days, it was difficult for people to contact one another while out farming the land, so they would carry firecrackers with them to give signals when necessary. But people's lifestyles began to change after Leo Harbor was founded. They no longer had to travel out of town to tin the fields anymore, so the use of firecrackers for emergencies also began to dwindle. But through our local customs, the pioneering spirit of the firecrackers has been passed down to this very day. We made improvements to firecrackers and began setting them off during the lantern rite to commemorate the tenacious spirit of our ancestors. Wow! Everything has so much history in Liyue! As I'm sure you already know, everything on this land accumulates history and value as time passes. That is the nature of Liyue. I've left Kuching in charge of the fireworks show. If you're interested, why don't we pay her a visit together? to add a few more locations for launching fireworks. The show has to be visible all across Liyue, not just in the city. They celebrate Lantern right in Qingsa Village too, you know. <laughs> but... Lady Kuching... What about our budget? The budget is exactly what it's meant to be. It's the necessary amount of funds to properly carry out a task. If you think the current budget will not suffice, then we'll simply have to apply for more funding from the Ministry of Civil Affairs and wait for their approval. Our aim is to organize a memorable lantern rite. The budget is there just to facilitate planning. We mustn't lose sight of our goal. Yes, Lady Kuching. I understand. Good. And please remember, safety first. <sighs> Oh, it's Ningguang and the Traveler. Good to see you. Are you here for the Lantern Rite? Your timing couldn't be any better. The preparations are almost complete. 
I'm reviewing the positioning of the fireworks and double-checking the relevant facilities. It's all in a day's work. Forgive my directness, but if I'm not mistaken, you could just as easily leave these tasks to your subordinates. You've already been working around the clock these past few days. I am sure a break would not be amiss. Uh, no, no, it's fine. Really, I can handle it. Pungi, please redraft our plans, make a summary report, and send it to the Ministry of Civil Affairs. I'm going into town to check the progress of the fireworks setup. I'll return shortly. As for you, Traveler, you're our esteemed guest. Please, take the opportunity to stay in Liyue Harbor and enjoy the festivities. Pungi, is everything clear? Please remember the tasks I've given you. Yes, Lady Kuching. Don't worry. Good. Ningguang, Traveler, goodbye for now. Please, excuse me, Lady Ningguang. And, uh, Traveler, I must get going. Lady Kuching told me a great deal of information, and I have to write up the plans from scratch again, so time is of the essence. Oh, one moment. I almost forgot. Here, Traveler. This is a launch tube. Lady Kuching said you may be interested, so she had me keep one to give to you. Someone with good handicraft skills should be able to use this to design their very own fireworks. You should try it when you have the chance. Paimon couldn't get a single word in just now. Uh, well, more like Paimon didn't dare open her mouth while they were talking, but still. Did you notice it too? Lady Kuching is a lot more outspoken than she used to be. And she seems a whole lot busier too. Wonder why? Ever since the adept I left Leo Harbor in the hands of mortals, we Qixing have taken up the responsibility of leading the people. We have taken charge of many vital tasks in various sectors, and we are responsible for planning and organizing all sorts of affairs. That said, being in charge of everything inevitably takes its toll. It's exhausting at times. Jiangzhou was responsible for planning the Lantern Rite in former years, but her father is getting quite old now, so she transferred to another department this year. In the end, the Lantern Rite planning was left to Kuching and myself. I am the head organizer, while Kuching is responsible for the highly anticipated fireworks show. Such an important event should be entrusted to the most qualified candidate. Kuching is disciplined, yet passionate about her work, so she's naturally the best fit for the job. She's definitely disciplined! No doubt about that! Absolutely. She is strict with both herself and others, to the point that she can even become overly involved at times. She's worked several days without a break now. I'm concerned about the effects it may have in the long run. Finding balance is an essential concept in Liyue culture. I've tried talking to her, but you know how she is. She uses her wit to talk circles around anyone. Traveler. You are quite close to Kuching. Why don't you try talking to her? Maybe she'd listen to someone as experienced as you. Thank you, Traveler. I am glad you are able to help. Kuching can be a tough nut to crack sometimes. I still have other business to attend to at the Jade Chamber. I'll leave Kuching in your capable hands. Sure, you can really persuade Kuching to take a break. Even Ningguang herself couldn't manage to convince her. Besides, before you can persuade someone, you have to at least understand how they feel at the moment. Kuching has been working non stop without a break. Uh, duh! Come on, everyone knows that. Think harder. How does she feel deep, deep down inside? Uh... Or... Maybe... <gasps> we can ask a friend! You know, someone more knowledgeable about these things. Huh? Zhang Li? Oh, 
There's no arguing that. Zhang Li it is then. Hmm, Paimon thinks he's still a consultant at the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. Let's go see if he's there. Hello. How may I help you? Ah, yes. Well, I'm afraid he is currently out with the director. Out with the director? Oh, you mean for work? The director said that they were going for a walk. If you'd prefer, you could go look for them at Third Round Knockout. I've heard the director often goes there to do, uh, promotion. Yum, yum, yum. Ooh, I am so full. Not another bite. <laughs> Hats off to you, Shengling. Serving the grilled fish with a dipping sauce is quite an innovative approach. The flavor is just to die for. <laughs> That's my signature dipping sauce. I knew it would taste great. Hmm. Tempered Jueyun chili powder mixed with garlic paste and chopped scallions then seasoned with salt, vinegar, and soy sauce, before finally sizzling in hot oil. This recipe may seem a bit crude, but is entirely hinged on the precise balancing of flavors and seasonings by the chef. Everything must be balanced just right. It is the consummate mastery of this balance that turns a humble dish into an exquisite one. Oh, that's quite the compliment, don't you think? <laughs> I'm flattered. Thank you, Mr. Zhongli. And I thought I have a way with words. But you certainly take the prize, Mr. Zhongli. You are too kind, Director. Your eloquence is... <clears throat> infamous in Liu Harbor. Oh, what's that? Oh, would you like to order something, Guoba? Oh, please, by all means, it's my treat. I'll just open a tab under Xiangling. <gasps> hey, are you guys talking about tasty food again? Oh, it's the Traveler in Paimon. What brings you to this side of town? Hold on, let me take a wild guess. Hmm, yes. Oh, you must be here for the lantern, right? Uh, isn't that pretty obvious? <laughs> Nobody could have guessed that. Oh, yeah, come on. Can't you take a joke? You came at the perfect time. I was just letting everyone try my latest dish. The owner of Third Round Knockout says it's, it, well, a real knockout. Mr. Zhang Li and Hu Tao seem to like it too, but I think it never hurts to let more people do a taste test. How about it, you two? Would you like to have a taste? Huh. Don't have to ask Paimon twice. Or once, even! Huh? You mean we're not gonna try any? Oh, fine. Let's get down to business. We meet again, Traveler. I trust your journey is going well? Splendid. Therein lies the value of a journey. So come on. Why are you looking for our good consultant? Do enlighten us. And just in case you were wondering, we're on business too. We only tried Xiangling's dish since we just happened to be here. 
business? What kind of business would the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor possibly have during a festival? Even during the most joyous of holidays, life still follows its natural course, does it not? Is that really so surprising? <laughs> but there isn't a need to be alarmed. It's just a nice day today, and I thought we could go for a walk while doing a little promotion for our business. Oh, you could go ahead and chat away. Xiangling and I will go have some tea with the boss over there. Oh, Xiongli, please come get me when you're through here. Of course. I'll see you later, Director. Now then, Traveler. What brings you to see me today? Hmm. Yes. The Yuhang is honest, intelligent, and most diligent. She is capable of shouldering responsibilities that few others could. But everything has a balance, and one's health must certainly weigh in. Yeah! Everyone knows you're super knowledgeable! Paimon bets she would listen to someone like you! If I were still the mighty Rex Lapis, I might be able to help her see reason. But alas, I'm now nobody but an ordinary consultant. My words no longer carry the same weight as they once did. Besides, I am by no means close to the Yuhang. Taking the liberty to lecture her may just as easily produce the opposite of the desired effect. Oh, you're right. Uh, then what should we do? We could take a more subtle, indirect approach to the matter. Such as telling a story that resonates with her containing your message conveyed within it. Such a story can be achieved by referencing topics from her daily life. The story could prove even more effective if you weave in something about someone close to her. Um... Paimon doesn't really get it. I knew you'd understand what to do. <laughs> well done, Traveler. Go collect some source materials for your story. Of course, I can always provide you with my advice, if needed. Once we have formulated the plot, you can tell the story to the Yuhang. You are on amiable terms with the Yuhang, which makes you the natural candidate. Oh, Paimon gets it! So we need to talk with people who know Kuching, right? Hmm, so who should we start with? Greetings, everyone. Uh, I hope I'm not intruding. Huh? Oh! Lady Kuching! <laughs> Mr. Zhongli, I didn't expect to see you here. Thank you for all your assistance during the rite of parting. You are most welcome, Yu Hung. It was the least I could do. Hmm? Why? And what's with your strange expression? Oh, I see. My apologies. I appear to have interrupted your conversation with Mr. Zhongli. Kuching, are you here looking for us? Yes. I was going to ask you to introduce me to the Adepti. I thought that it would be fitting to send them some festive gifts. On behalf of the Liyue Qixing. But didn't you meet them when we were fighting to defend Liyue Harbor together? You could just as easily go and find them in Julian Karst. Yes, but we only met briefly on that single occasion. The Adepti may have already forgotten about me. And I'm concerned it would be imprudent to show up so suddenly. Which is why I thought it would be more appropriate to ask you to introduce me first. So you even have to run around delivering gifts in person? It sure doesn't seem easy to be a cheesing. Thank you, Traveler. Let me go and prepare the gifts. I'm sorry to make you run errands with me during our big festival. I promise to make this quick, and I'll be sure to get you back in time to enjoy the fireworks show. Huh? T together <clears throat> All right. I'll go to see the fireworks with you once I've finished my work. Speaking of which, Mr. Zhongli, the fireworks show will be particularly exciting this year. Please, don't miss it. 
Ah, yes. Thank you for your kind reminder. I should be going now. Traveler, please come find me at the Jade Chamber once you're ready. And there she goes! <laughs> That's the Yu Hung. Efficient and reliable as ever. You're really reliable too, Zhang Li! <laughs> Why, thank you, Paimon. Please, don't forget our earlier conversation. Once you've collected enough story material, we can meet here again and discuss things further. <laughs> A great many things are still unaccounted for. The new Jade Chamber is missing many of the contents held by its predecessor. All the literature, furniture, and ornaments I had collected followed the original Jade Chamber to its watery grave. Most of it was destroyed in the process, and the small handful of items that survived intact are strewn across the water's surface. Reclaiming them is taxing work. It takes someone with sturdy sea legs to handle this job, but even then, I just can't tell whether Beta will be able to fish out everything herself. Wait, so you made Beto go and fish your stuff out of the sea for you? To claim that I made her do anything would be imprecise. We reached a mutually beneficial agreement, as is always the case in our dealings. Payment is one aspect of it, but I also compensate her in other ways. <laughs> Let's just say it's a little complicated. Anyway, Beto is currently in the Guyen Stone Forest area. If you're interested, go pay her a visit. You may be just the help she needs. Long. You're really trying my patience. I'm sorry, but if the Jade Chamber smashed into smithereens when it hit the sea, then so did everything inside it. Just because I know the ocean doesn't mean I have the power to fish up the past. 
Oh, Traveler, what are you doing out this way? Great, you couldn't have picked a better time. The whole fleet's caught up with other things right now, so I'll take all the help I can get. Look, I even had to rope Shinyan into this. Yeah, what's the occasion? Did you come all the way out here to do a performance? You bet I did. <laughs> Nothing official, mind you. Beta wanted to hold a feast on board, and I agreed to come play a couple of tunes. But all that went out the window when someone showed up saying they were one of Ning Wong's secretaries. They called Beto away. Uh, I think it was Bai Wen or Bai Xiao. Uh, well, it was Bai something. Anyway, Ning Wong apparently came up with the bright idea of me going out on the sea and salvaging a bunch of her old valuables. She seems pretty willing to shell out for it, too. <sighs> well... At the end of the day, the price was right. So, yeah, we took the work. Now, if we're gonna go trawling for trinkets, we're gonna need a smaller vessel. All the available boats have been dispatched already, but by the looks of it, we're still one short. So you have your own vessel, do ya? <laughs> Great, let's take yours then. The more people we have on this job, the better. Because the sooner we get this wrapped up, the sooner we can get that feast going and actually enjoy the festival. Is it? This is your boat? It's really, uh, compact. But it works. It's about the right size for sweeping up junk from the water's surface. The only thing is, we're packed in like sardines here. There's nowhere to put my guitar. Uh, Shinyan? Hold up, are those treasure orders? Hmm. We don't usually see these guys out at sea. Huh? Why are they headed back to shore? To reconvene with their posse, I'll bet. Speed it up a notch, traveler. Gaining on us. We can't give them the slip. Call it Carmen. <laughs> Carmen? <laughs> what kind of treasure hoarder has a name like that? One that I happen to know pretty well. Didn't think we'd be running into him. Moments of birth. Stabilize. I will have order. <laughs> Are you blind? Can't you see this is Captain Beto? <laughs> Captain Beto, it's been a while. Still fighting fit, I see. I guess it has been a while, Carmen. You're looking a little worse for wear. 
Maybe if you did your own dirty work rather than dispatching your minions, you wouldn't be so out of breath right now. <laughs> How you jest, Beto. Very amusing. <laughs> to get serious for a second, though, I'm gonna be needing all of this. So put everything down, and I won't cause you any more trouble. Of course, of course. Whatever Captain Beto wants. You heard her, people. Drop the goods. Here you are. It's all here. So, uh, we'll take our leave now? Wow. He did what we asked without a second thought. <laughs> Couldn't run off quickly enough, either. Ugh, don't waste any more time on them. We've still got salvaging to do. Ah, but we should load this stash onto the boat first. Come on, Traveler, help me out here. Useless. Hey, there's some things floating on the water. Hmm. Can't quite make out what they are. Let's bring them in and take a look. I'll take the rudder. Traveler, Xinyan, go reel them in. Another treasure hoarder raft straight up ahead, but why is it empty? I guess Carmen told all his people to call it off. Smart choice. He knows who he's up against. <laughs> Let's keep going. Come on, we gotta wrap this up soon. Leave the junk, take anything and everything of value. And I need a few of you to load the boat up. Move it! Whatever you're about to do, don't. And whatever goods you're holding, they're mine now. But, Beto, wh what are you doing here? I might ask you the same question. I mean, uh, what does it look like? We got lucky, found some treasure floating around in the ocean. If you see anything you like, it's yours for the taking. A token of our esteem for the mighty Captain Beto. <laughs> Is that right? Well, good. I'll take it all. I, uh, but, uh, c come on. <laughs> Be reasonable here. Me and the guys have been busting a gut gathering all this up. Y y you gotta leave us a little something something, surely. Let me make this crystal clear. These things do not belong to you, and they never will. So you're gonna put them down, and then you're gonna get as far away from me as is physically possible. Uh... That's a little, uh, hey, hey, hey. Uh, why don't we start over here, huh? You see, we... Huh. Sounds a lot like you're stalling to me. Talk is cheap. Let's settle this the old-fashioned way. Who? Who's there? Back off! <laughs> Crumble! My apologies! Rise! This is order. Right on target. Coming to launch. Surrender. Stabilize. Live. Witness my great undertaking. Whirling snow. Useless. Disappear. Right <sighs> here! Worthless! The boat's loaded in, in the water, boss. Come take a look. Uh, Captain Beto pulls no punches. Retreat! Retreat! Uh, if the boss is bailing, we'd better bail too! Wow! Looks like they're out of here! We're, we're sorry we offended you, Captain Beto. Give us some time. We'll find a way to make it right. I promise. Boy, they sure ran off quickly.
Ah, uh, who cares? They didn't take anything with them. The bigger problem here is there's no way all of this is going to fit onto your boat. <sighs> okay, here's what we're gonna do. Unload the boat and put everything here in one place. Based on the original plan, Sea Drake's boat should be coming past here at some point. When they get here, we'll hitch a ride with them. In the meantime, Traveler, head back to the Jade Chamber and deliver a message to Ningguang for me. Just tell her we're almost done fishing for trinkets here, so... She should start getting my compensation ready. Alright, thanks, Traveler. If both Carmen and Leo Leo were here, then I wonder if that other boss of theirs, Big Sis, is snooping around. I've gotta tell Sea Drake and the rest of the crew to stay on high alert. Welcome back. I trust Beta was making good progress on salvaging the items? Treasure hoarders. I see. Yes, I can imagine that must have been rather irksome. It sounds like you scared them off on this occasion. But it won't end there. They are not the type to forgive and forget. You needn't concern yourself with them any further, though. Leave them to Beto. She is well versed in handling treasure hoarders. I will be sure to make preparations for her compensation. I also owe you my thanks for coming all this way to deliver Beto's message. Here, please take this as a token of my appreciation. Now, please excuse me. I have other business that demands my attention. I wish you a fun-filled festival. You've arrived. I've made all the necessary preparations and even packed some handmade snacks. Oh, that reminds me. I've also prepared some launch tubes made by Pungyi. I hope the Adepti will like them. Is there anything else I should bring? Good. In that case, let's first pay Madame Ping a visit in the city before heading out to Joyun Karst.
festive season is upon us. This is no time to be running hither and thither. We should relax and enjoy the season. I get it, Granny, but you know, having lots of clients is a good thing. <laughs> I'm sure it is, but really, child, who could be seeking your help during the Lantern Rite? <laughs> You'd be surprised. It's a pleasure to see you again, Madam Ping. How are you? Oh dear, well, look who's here. I'm so glad to see you all in time for the festival. Hello, Traveler. Long time no see. Oh, and Lady Kuching is here too. The Qixing have prepared some small gifts for you to celebrate this festive occasion. There are some seasonal goods, two bolts of fine silk, and some exotic flower seeds which I picked specifically for you, Madam Ping. I brought all the lighter gifts with me, but the silks are still on the way. I just submitted them for delivery, so I'm sure they'll arrive in good time. Please, accept our humble gifts. I hope you'll find them to your liking. Wow, those gifts sound marvelous! Please be sure to thank the Qixing on our behalf. Yes, how very nice of you. I'm sure the flowers will be most beautiful if you personally selected the seeds. Thank you very much, Kuching. Please, enjoy them. We intend to visit the other Adepti as well, so I'm afraid we must be going now. I presume you mean Cloud Retainer and the others? Yes, they should be over in Zhueyun Karst. By the way, I've heard that you designed all the street decorations yourself, Kuching. You decorated the city so beautifully, yet you don't even have the time to go and see it for yourself. What a pity. Yenfei really enjoys spending time at the festival. You'll find her wandering around there whenever she can spare a moment. Come on, Granny, I wasn't wandering around. I was providing essential consultation to my clients. Oh, is that so? Were you also holding consultations with clients while you stood in front of the grilled tiger fish stand for all that time? As a matter of fact, I was helping them calculate the prices. It's not easy, you know. I had to check a lot of different items. That's right. There are no holidays in my line of work. I have to be ready whenever my clients need me. That sounds exhausting. Oh, Paimon can't imagine a life without holidays. Well, though there are no set holidays, I do get to decide on my own schedule. I can always budget some time to relax. Otherwise, I would always look exhausted in front of potential clients. It'd be hard to land new cases after leaving a terrible first impression. Besides, uh, what's the saying? Ah, yes. A rested worker is an efficient worker. I was there many times when I was supervising the festival construction, but I haven't been there since. I was planning to go after I finished my work, but the work keeps piling up. I ended up completely forgetting about it. Yes, I should take the opportunity to show you around while you're here. But first, we should head to Joyun Karst. If you'll excuse us, Madam Ping. We'll be leaving now. Let's see... Which Adeptus shall we visit first? <laughs> Cloud Retainer it is. The festive season is fast approaching. What brings you to one's abode? Has the Ministry of Civil Affairs simply run out of work for you to do? 
Well, with Lantern Rite just around the corner, I decided it was a good time to take leave and pay you a visit. But, um, where are Mooncarver and Mountain Shaper? Them? Oh, don't even get one started. Oh, is that not the Traveler and the Yuhang too? Hmm, a rare visitor indeed. Happy Lantern Rite, everybody! Greetings, Venerable Adeptus. And greetings, Ganyu. Huh? Lady Kuching, I didn't expect to see you here. The Yu Hung of the Chi Sing. Here. Most fascinating. Hmm. Most courteous of you to travel hither and pay your respects. What is the purpose of your visit, if one may ask? It's the festive season, and on behalf of the Chi Sing, I'd like to give you our regards. Please, accept our humble gifts. As the governing body of Liu e, the Chi Sing must be busy with a myriad of affairs. And yet, you still take the time to visit one in this mountain abode. Eminently considerate of you. Oh, what an amusing cylindrical device. I wonder what that could be. This is a new type of firework which has been modified by the Ministry of Civil Affairs. I've heard that you are fond of gadgets, so I've brought one for your amusement. Cloud Retainer. Although she is not outwardly opposed to us, she is still skeptical of Liyue being ruled by humans. Maybe she thinks humans are still too young to handle it. Hmm. No matter. With time, our strength will become apparent enough. Before then, we should try to give her a good impression. <laughs> good thing I came prepared. Cloud Retainer has a great interest in gadgets, so she will certainly appreciate this gift. Ganyu has said that Cloud Retainer is very picky about food, so I made sure not to bring any snacks to avoid upsetting her. I've given everything thorough consideration. It should all go well. Goodness me. Who ever would have thought? Oh, my how very interesting. It is intricate with ingenious design and is aesthetically agreeable. Yes, judging from Cloud Retainer's expression, it seems this gift was a success. Very good. One shall gladly accept this device. One surmises from Ganyu's words that you also wish to see Moon Carver and Mountain Shaper. Pity. Your timing is most unfortunate. Oh, are they not home? Oh, we wanted to see them too. Hmm, those two old fossils. Moon Carver has been most anxious to see how Liu e Harbor fares, but the agreement was clear. Liu e is now in the hands of the Chi Sing. And he cannot simply roam into the city and begin supervising others' work as he pleases. So one tried to persuade him otherwise, proposing that if he could not be placated, he could go to the city disguised as a human and take a brief look around. Alas, he is too stubborn, too proud. He would have none of it. Thereafter he left, claiming to have gone traveling, he has not returned since. Mountain Shaper, however, is more open-minded. But he said he wished to look for something new with which to defend the tranquility of his mountain. He told one that he was leaving in search of treasures, and one has not heard from him since. Wait. Surely this is not a case of two old coots and cahoots? Rusing to excuse themselves that they might venture behind one's back, to scurry away and go traveling together. Huh? What's everybody doing here? This voice. Is it Shenhe? Oh? Oh? 
so Shenhu's here too. Is she also here to visit Cloud Retainer? Is she the one that you mentioned before? Hello, everyone. Shenhu, this is Ganyu. You have most likely heard of her. Uh, oh, uh, hello. I'm Ganyu. I work at Yujing Terrace. I've heard that you returned to Liyua Harbor recently, so if you need anything, please feel free to come to me. I will. Thank you. I brought some food from the city. I heard that during Lantern Rite, people in Liyue bring food to share with their friends. So here I am. Oh no, I made a point of not bringing any food offerings. Is it going to be okay? Oh, and you even brought food for those two old fossils. That's right. Hmm. <clears throat> After barely a few days in the city, you have learned so much. Thank you for these delectable edibles, Shenhe. <sighs> huh? Everyone, you shall all be staying in Liyue Harbor in the future. One should like to think that you will all look out for each other. Is that understood? Will do. Yes, understood. This place is much livelier than I'd imagined. The Conqueror of Demons? One has not seen him of late. Well, then he's probably not enjoying Karst. Let's go look for him in his usual spot, at Wang Shuen. In short, one is the only Adeptus who has elected to remain in Juryung Karst for the festival. Had Ganyu not come to visit, one would likely have stayed firmly put in one's abode to resume research of gadgets and mechanics. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Please accept my profuse apologies. <laughs> Why the sudden solemnity? It would certainly not be the first time one has been interrupted on your account. As a youngling, you did so love to scurry around the place while one's attention was monopolized by mechanisms. You were especially drawn to a certain implement one had made. Oh, what was it? Oh? Oh no, here she goes again. This could spell trouble for Ganyu. Huh? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Cloud Retainer. I just remembered there's something I must attend to. I should be going. Oh, why the sudden haste? With the Yuhang present, why not settle this matter here and now? Uh, n no. It's something very important. In fact, I must see Lady Ningguang about it immediately. A matter so pressing that you must find Ningguang in person? Uh, <clears throat> uh, yes. Ningguang and I have different scopes of work, you see, and Ganyu has to report to both of us, respectively. It's indeed not easy for her. Lady Kuching is trying to help me. Yes, that's right. I'm very sorry, everyone. I will take my leave. Huh. Gone already. That child, she has always been easily ruffled. One can sympathize, however. It is no simple thing to be a secretary. Nearly every matter in Liyue Harbor Momentous or trivial, passes through Ganyu's diligent hands. But even as an adeptus, she must never neglect her own health, lest she fall prone to exhaustion. Ganyu is an assiduous worker, apt to forgoing food and rest once she is busy. Please make sure she eats and sleeps properly whenever you see her. 
I will. Ganyu has always been a great asset to us. Her health is a priority, so I will take good care of her. The Yuhang, reliable as ever. <laughs> it was indeed a wise decision to leave Liyue Harbor to you. We will certainly strive to live up to your expectations. As for these edibles... Hmm, they do look delectable indeed. You may leave them here. Shanha shall bring these into one's abode, and one shall pass them on to Moon Carver and Mountain Shaper once they have made their return. This firework has an intriguing design. One must conduct a thorough study of it. And one also wants to hear what Shenha has learned in Liyue Harbor. Oh, yes. I have many interesting stories to tell. Let us chat while one scrutinizes this device. Yeah! Don't you rest during the holidays? This is a festive season after all. <laughs> one has long been living secluded in the mountains and no longer observes the holidays. Worry not, one shall take appropriate care of oneself. Rest is crucial. If one is too devoted to one's research and falls ill, one shall be in no fit state to test the devices personally. Is it really that important to test it yourself? Of course. As one sows, so do they reap. And the joy of reaping is what one yearns for. If one spends all that time working on a machine, yet forgets to test the outcome. Hm. That would be akin to a chef who never tries his own food, no? It is unwise to put the cart before the horse. Ah, <sighs> enough idle chatter, everyone. One must go and continue one's research. Come, Shenhe, this way. A chef who doesn't get to try their own food? Cloud Retainer sure does know a lot about gadgets and cooking. Though, she can be a bit strange sometimes. But then again, she is an Adeptus. That's the wisdom of an Adeptus. She takes good care of those around her. Though she lives in seclusion, she also manages to bring everyone together. A hermit who's more social than most living in society. <laughs> what an interesting character. Traveler, Paimon, let's head to Wangshu Inn. Perhaps we'll find the Conqueror of Demons there. Let's ask Virgil Det where the Conqueror of Demons may be. Dr. Baiju, here are the herbs. I've picked lots of them. Splendid! Let me pack up and then we can be on our way. Hey, you guys! What are you doing? Dr. Baiju wanted herbs. So, I came to collect herbs. Lots of them. And... Dr. Baiju came too. Traveler! Paimon! Oh, and Lady Kaching! It's a pleasure to see you all. We're here stocking up more herbs. Boo Boo Pharmacy always runs out of digestive herbs during the festival seasons. With Lantern right just around the corner, I thought we should get prepared. We came all this way to collect some herbs, and we've picked quite the assortment. We'll be on our way back to the pharmacy once the herbs are sorted. I certainly didn't expect to see the Yuhang all the way out here. I have some business to attend to here. Ah, I see. It's nearly time to celebrate Lantern Rite, and you're still running errands. Hard working as always. I appreciate the sentiment, Dr. Baiju. I'm just doing my job. 
Kuching and the Traveler are very busy. And we are busy too. Everyone, keep it up. Right. Thank you, Chi Chi. We shouldn't tarry here any longer. Take care, you two. Uh, um, three. Traveler, let's go find Virgoldet. Lady Kuching, what a surprise. Is there anything I can help you with? No, thank you. I'm just wondering if you might know where the Conqueror of Demons is. Oh, we never inquire about Xiao's whereabouts. But if he's here, he would be up on the rooftop terrace. Please feel free to go up and have a look. He doesn't seem to be here. Perhaps we came at the wrong time. Maybe he's out battling somewhere again. Let's leave the gifts with the owner and ask her to... How can I help? Yes. Hello. I am Kuching, Yuhong of the Liyue Chising. The Yuhong. Yes. I saw you when we battled Osile. You are fierce with your blade. Uh, anyway, we're here to give you some lantern right presents. See? There's lots of tasty food! Hmph. <laughs> Don't waste your delicacies on me. <sighs> Eradicating demons is my duty. You don't have to thank me. Karma is harmful to the human body. Even if you have a stronger constitution than most. You should keep your distance from me when you can afford to. Hey, wait! Are you leaving? Aw, oh, come on! Lantern Rite is almost here! Don't you want to take a break? Like I said before, I have no liking for crowds. I must remain vigilant of evil attacks, especially during the holidays. I will continue my patrol as usual. You should also exercise caution. And if there's any danger... Good. And he's gone! Well, Xiao hasn't changed a bit. Wonder if he'll come and watch the fireworks this year, though. All right, we've completed our visits with all the Adepti. Let's take a break downstairs before we head back into the city. Oh no, what should we do? Huh? Oh, Lady Kuching! Lady Kuching! I'm so glad to see you here. Uh, Feng Yi? 
What's wrong? What are you doing here? Lady Kuching, let me explain. I had rearranged the fireworks layout and expanded the range to Qingsa Village, just like you requested. My people finished setting up the fireworks, and we left someone in charge to launch them for the show. But... <sighs> the person we left in charge came back shortly after, and reported that all the fireworks in Qingsa Village had been stolen. I immediately reported the situation to the Millileth, and had another batch of fireworks made to be transported to Qingsa Village under escort. However... Everyone's short-handed during Lantern Rite. The Millilith are already stretched thin and don't even have enough people to fill their regular patrols. They can't spare anyone to look after the fireworks for us. We don't have many materials left, so if the second batch of fireworks gets stolen as well, we're done for. So, I was thinking to go to Chingsa Village and have a look first. Which is when I bumped into you. Lady Kuching, what should we do? According to the Ministry of Civil Affairs, the number of guards on patrol has to be doubled and rotated continuously during Lantern Rite. They must perform these extra measures in addition to their standard daily affairs. The only manpower they can muster during the festival would be the emergency response units. But those special units are intended only for backup. There are not many of them and they cannot perform prolonged guard duty. If we wish to make use of them, we'll need to resolve the problem quickly. Maybe we can ask the Adepti for help. This would be a piece of cake for someone like Cloud Retainer or Xiao. <sighs> no, that would only make us look incompetent. I'll handle this, Pungyi. We can help too, Kuching. Thanks, you two. Actually, I have an idea. Let me make some arrangements. Pungyi? Go back to Liyue Harbor and get the fireworks ready. Then meet me in Chingsa Village. Traveler, come with me. Let's ask around to see what happened. Could a whole batch of fireworks just vanish like that? Hello, Granny Roshin. We'd like to know more about the recent fireworks theft. Oh, Lady Kaching, I can hardly believe you came personally to investigate. It's no trouble at all. Please tell us what happened. Well, when they brought the fireworks, the children in the village were very excited. They were all gathered round, watching the area for a long time. The workers piled up the fireworks and said they would go confirm the locations to set them off. That's when they left the village. Oh, now, let me remember. Ah, oh, yes. I recall that they left the fireworks in an open area just next to a house down the old road. But the very next day, all the fireworks were nowhere to be seen. The person in charge of the fireworks was so anxious that they went straight back to the city to find a solution. Oh, the villagers here are worried too. The fireworks missing can only mean that there are thieves about. There are elderly and kids in the village, you know? Although the Millilith are stationed here, no one dares to go out anymore. I understand. Please help reassure the people in the village and tell them everything's going to be fine with the Millilith standing guard. Traveler, let's go investigate the place where the fireworks were stolen. This is the place. The fireworks were stolen here. The thieves must think there are mostly elderly and children living in Chingsa Village. All too weak to defend themselves. Otherwise, they would never dare commit such a blatant crime. This is absolutely awful. 
We cannot let such a matter go unpunished. Let's see if we can find any clues here before we plan our next step. Are these... footprints? Let's see where they lead. The footprints continue here. Let's keep following them. The footprints continue here. Let's keep following them. Sir, please. This is all just a big misunderstanding. <laughs> a misunderstanding, you say? If so, then tell me, why are you hiding here? Please, good sir. This really is just a misunderstanding. <laughs> I would never dream of getting anywhere near the Feiyun Commerce Guild shipment. Something's happening over there. Let's go have a look. The Feiyun Commerce Guild? It must be... Please, save your breath. Restrain this fellow! Tightly now, we mustn't let him get away! Yes, young master. Uh, I was sure it was an evil spirit. Turns out it's the treasure hoarders again. Xing Chun Chun Yun! Hello! Well, hello, dear traveler. Our fates cross once again. What brings you here? Uh, excuse me. Please, tell me what is happening here. Ah, yes. Allow me to explain. It so happens that every year during the Lantern Rite, the Feiyun Commerce Guild transports supplies to various villages outside of Liyue Harbor. Family rules stipulate that the supplies must be personally escorted by a family member. Because my older brother went last year, the duties have fallen to me this time around. Oh! So what's Chang Yun doing here? Chang Yun happened to be visiting, so I cordially invited him to join us for the journey. Oh, I see! Um, but why did Chang Yun say he thought there was an evil spirit? I see that you are not familiar with the story of old. It is said that fireworks were once called firecrackers, and were used to ward off evil spirits and the like. In ancient times, Liyue was plagued by evil spirits. As people gathered together to celebrate the annual festival, the Yang energy would intensify, and evil spirits were thus attracted to the fringes of the city by the strong scent. Liyue Harbor was under the gracious protection of Rex Lapis, so the spirits dared not enter the city. However, they still lingered near the city gates and pestered the passers-by. In order to drive the spirits away, people made firecrackers and lit them near the city gates. The flashes of light and loud noise successfully drove the spirits whence they came. This festival is now known as the Lantern Rite. It was my intention to travel around to see if there are any malicious spirits lying in wait for passers-by. Since I happened to have a shipment of goods to deliver, and our course was through the mountains, I naturally thought it best to have my thaumaturge friend traveling alongside me. Sincho said he learned the story about evil spirits from an ancient text. The text vividly describes the appearance and even the whereabouts of the spirits. Anyway, when we arrived at the area, Chong Yun sensed an ambush about to take place. Upon searching the area, we found a group of treasure hoarders. They tried to flee the moment we were upon them. Fortunately, I was swift enough to catch one of them. Your timing couldn't have been more fortunate. We were just preparing to send them to the Ministry of Civil Affairs. He insists the matter is merely a misunderstanding, but things seem quite clear as I see it. Good sir, just hear me out. Everyone knows the Feiyun Commerce Guild. Had we known it was your merchant caravan, we never would have dared to attack. The master of the Feiyun Commerce Guild is famous for his generosity and noble deeds, a, a, a true hero of the people. <laughs> so, you see, this is nothing but a big misunderstanding. We, we didn't want any trouble with the Guild. 
What you mean to say is that you were targeting someone else then? Well, who was it? I... Uh, well, uh, well, just trust me. We were definitely not trying to steal your goods. Please, please believe me. Master Singcho, I would like to borrow a few of your staff to escort the thief to the Ministry of Civil Affairs. As for the bounty, we will pay you afterward. It is my humble duty to uphold justice. No remuneration shall be necessary. Come then, see that this thief is taken to the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Yes, young master, leave it to us. You heard him. Take this man over there and make sure he's secured. Tie each of his fingers separately if you have to. He's not gonna pull anything under our watch. Wait a second. Please also deliver this message to the Ministry of Civil Affairs. <clears throat> it's very likely that this thief is related to the recent fireworks theft in Chingsa Village. Make sure they have someone question him. Thoroughly. <laughs> so the plot thickens. Is your task clear? We mustn't disappoint the Yuong. Yes, young master, I understand. We'll be on our way. I've heard many good things about you, Master Xingqiu. Thank you for your assistance. I hardly lifted a finger. Think nothing of it. Everyone, my intuition tells me that there could be more than one group of treasure hoarders in this area. More than one group? Oh, you've got quite a keen eye too, Chong Yun. During our search, I found scattered sets of footprints differing from those on the road. There may still be other treasure hoarders waiting to ambush passers-by. When I was chasing the treasure hoarders earlier, I noticed that they were nearly unarmed and very few in numbers. If they truly intended to ambush the Fei Yun Commerce Guild, they must have overestimated themselves. If you ask me, they didn't seem to be staging an ambush, but rather it appeared as if they were waiting for someone. It appears they may be the thief's accomplices. They were probably hiding here to wait for the stolen goods. What exactly are the stolen goods, if I may ask? Taking advantage of the elderly and children. What a loathsome group of criminals. Lady Kuching, don't fret about manpower. Chongyun, let's go lend them a hand in Chingsa Village, shall we? Yeah, just leave it to us. We can handle a bunch of thieves. Thank you. That will help alleviate the crisis in Chingsa Village. Unfortunately, the footprints we were following end here. I don't know where we should go next. <sighs> it seems we were only a moment away from catching all the treasure hoarders. Aww. Kuching. <sighs> Thank you. Master Xingqiu, I'll leave Chingsa Village under your watch. Most assuredly, Lady Kuching. <sighs> it's fortunate our paths crossed with those two. It's so cool to fight for justice! The thieves who stole the fireworks haven't revealed themselves yet. I'll go have a look around. Traveler, please go take a rest in Chingsa Village. I've troubled you enough already. I can handle the rest of this matter myself. Are you planning to look for clues all by yourself? Um, somehow that doesn't sound like a very good idea. Oh, wait! You're in the Liwei Chising! Why don't you ask some of your subordinates to help? At least it'll be safer than investigating on your own. Yes, I agree, but we are short-handed at the moment. I can handle these trivial matters myself. The fireworks that were transported to Chingsa Village were quite bulky. They couldn't have gone far. Way I see it, if they were clever enough, they would conceal the stolen goods somewhere and then come pick them up later. All I have to do is find out where they hid the fireworks and then return to the location with reinforcements. Don't worry. I am not reckless, and I won't carelessly alert the thieves. You can certainly trust me by now. Well, when you put it that way... It's settled then. Traveler, Paimon, please go get some rest. I'll go find you in Chingsa Village when I'm done.
Rest assured, all is quiet here in Chinksa Village. Chang Yun is guarding the outside, and I'm guarding the inside. Not a problem in sight. Good. I've made some progress in my investigation as well. Oh? What are you planning? Is it time to strike? Let's go! Traveler, Paimon, you are just in time. I looked everywhere, and I found some clues regarding the treasure hoarders. Besides wagon tracks, I also came across bits and pieces of fireworks packaging scattered on the road. Following those clues, I was able to finally locate the missing fireworks. But there was no sign of treasure hoarders. No, I think they might be just overly careless. I seem to have found the location where they've been stashing all their stolen goods. They must have thought it was well hidden and deemed it unnecessary to post any guards. The amount of fireworks they've amassed there is astonishing. Not only did they steal the ones in Chingsa Village, but also from other locations too. They've gathered all the stolen goods there. I've asked the Mililith on guard at Chingsa Village to report this to the Ministry of Civil Affairs. They will organize a search around that warehouse. Now that the Mililith is involved, you don't need to handle this yourself anymore! The treasure hoarders are notoriously cunning, and they may even have lookouts. If they notice anything suspicious, they will move the fireworks and our single lead will be lost. I have to keep an eye on the situation. Uh, you're not really thinking that you can take all of them yourself, are you? No, I am not that reckless. I just want to investigate the case thoroughly. But now that I have your help, the idea is feasible. So you really are considering it? Okay, then there's no time to lose. Let's go. Please hide yourselves. Let's wait and see what happens. Hey boss, you think we have enough fireworks now? Ha! <laughs> Are you kidding? This ain't nowhere near enough. Ah, uh, but boss, if we want more fireworks, we're gonna have to steal them in the city. Ain't gonna be easy. Hmm. You got a point. All right. Then we steal those things that make a real loud bang but don't light up real pretty. What do they call them? Ah, yeah, firecrackers. Those will do the job. All we need to do is make some real ruckus. As long as we distract the Millilith, the other hoarders can do their end of the job. You get it? Got it, boss. <laughs> I gotta hand it to you. We're gonna hit the jackpot this time. Uh, but, uh, boss, all our boys are out scouting around. Don't you think we need a few more to guard the stash? Hey, don't worry about it. The Millilith are swamped with lantern right. They won't have time to come out here. All right, move it, boys. Just a few more batches and we'll be... Uh-oh. Hey, boss, we got trouble. Huh? What happened? The jig is up, boss. The, the Millilith are coming, and it seems they've already caught our scouts. If one of the boys hadn't set off a firework to warn us, we would have been completely blindsided. Boss, let's run! 
But how did the Millilith find out about us? And so quickly, too! Ah! Fine! Leave the fireworks and let's split! They won't be catching us! It's time to make our move. Ready? Let's go! Drop your weapons and surrender immediately! Ha! Get out of my way! You got a death witch or something? I'll show you! Huh? Wait a second. You're... Lady Cutching! The Euro. <laughs> so you do recognize me, then. I'll say it one more time. Drop your weapon and surrender. Now! All right, so you want to do this the hard way. We... we surrender, you Hung. Now, I want some answers. What were you planning to do with the stockpile of fireworks? We... we just... Tell the truth, and I might go easy on you. We... Uh, fine. We were gonna smuggle these fireworks into the city and ignite them during the Lantern Rite's opening ceremony. The fireworks are really bright and loud and would definitely raise some havoc. We were gonna rob the city while everyone's distracted by the explosions. But, uh, we didn't seem to have enough fireworks, so... Oh? So you mean you had more than one group of thieves stealing fireworks? Yeah, that's right. Originally, I had all the hoarders out stealing fireworks, but then one of them got caught by the Feyun Commerce Guild and was arrested. I really didn't get it. Why did the Feyun Commerce Guild get involved? We were only stealing from the government. No, uh, what I meant is, uh, well, I was worried that the guy who got arrested would rat us out. Who would have guessed we'd end up running into you like that? Hey, didn't one of you just say that the Millilith were coming too? Yeah, that's right. I wonder how the Millilith even found out we had dispatched scouts. They somehow captured almost all of them. If someone hadn't alerted us, we would have all been caught. Well, you did get caught. Well, uh, yeah. It appears that the Millilith managed to get the captured treasure hoarder to talk. There may still be other treasure hoarders in the area. We should head elsewhere just to be safe. Traveler, please escort the treasure hoarders back to Chingsa Village and hand them over to the Millilith stationed there. I'll be there once I am finished inspecting this place. Yes, you too. I'll see you in Chinksa Village. This is the last batch of fireworks that I can get. Please ensure that there will be no further problems. Don't worry. The Yu Hong will be taking care of this personally. And with us on guard, I assure you it'll be safe. Yes, indeed. Oh, it appears the Traveler has returned. And with two others, no doubt. It's definitely dangerous to infiltrate an enemy area like that. If only I was there to fight alongside you. Come now, we both know the Traveler is most capable. <laughs> but who would have known we performed such a noble deed? We had arrested the treasure hoarder earlier by mere happenstance. Yeah, talk about a coincidence! It seems that justice always finds its way into the world. It is in fateful moments that miracles are born. So it was you! You horrible brutes are the ones who stole the fireworks? 
Just the sight of you two makes my blood boil. Please, calm down. I doubt they'll be causing any more trouble now that they're in custody. Thank you very much, Traveler. But may I ask, why has Lady Kuching not returned with you? Lady Kuching was worried there'd be more treasure hoarders lurking about. She wanted to conduct a full search of the area. Oh, I see. Yes, Lady Kuching is quite thorough. A squad of Millilith came by just now. I believe they were sent by the Ministry of Civil Affairs. I also heard that most of the fleeing treasure hoarders have already been apprehended. Hopefully that will be the end of this matter. Anyway, you may leave these treasure hoarders to us. I will escort them back to the city and make sure they stand trial with the others. And thus, our chapter has finally reached its timely conclusion. I am partial to fireworks myself, but I'm afraid we must also be leaving now. Huh? Why the hurry to get back to the Feiyun Commerce Guild? Oh, don't tell us you have work to do, too! Inevitably, affairs do become busier around festive seasons. But no need to worry. We have many attendants to assist us. And there's always Chongyun, too. Huh? You mean you're assigning more work to me? Tis only my duty as your dearest friend. Work before play, as they say. I'm sure you understand. Oh, all right. I suppose. As the saying goes, many hands make light work. As long as work is assigned to the right people, everything will proceed without a hitch. If you ask me, I think speaking eloquently is just a guise for assigning work to everybody else. All right, all right. I shall treat you to a meal after the work is done. Farewell, traveler. By the way, do you know when Lady Kuching will be back, Traveler? There are not many fireworks in the second batch that I brought, so I'm worried that we can't achieve the show's desired effect. I was hoping we could somehow retrieve the stolen fireworks. Hey! Did you hear that explosion? Maybe it was fireworks. <gasps> or maybe more treasure orders! Treasure hoarders. We heard an explosion and thought it might be treasure hoarders sending signals to one another again. Ah, uh, I see. Sorry, that's not the case. I saw a few sticks of fireworks on the ground, so I fiddled with them and... Sure enough, it seems... I accidentally lit the fuse. Before I could react, the fireworks were... <clears throat> already up in the air. So no enemies? Whew. Well, that's good. We thought you might have been surrounded by bad guys. <laughs> I apologize. I didn't mean to alarm you. Fortunately, there are no more treasure hoarders in the area. It seems this matter has finally come to an end. Great! The case of the stolen fireworks is finally solved. Good thing we were able to get to the bottom of it. Otherwise, those beautiful fireworks would have gone to waste, and the whole show would be ruined. By the way, Kuching, you're the one in charge of the fireworks show, which means you know the best viewing spot, right? Yes, of course. The best view should be from the Jade Chamber. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten my promise. But first, I have to drop by the Ministry of Civil Affairs and close this case. Leave the rest of this to me. You've already been a great help. Why don't you go for a walk around the city and I'll meet you when I'm done? Okay, but 
but we'll be waiting for you. Yes, I'll be there. Kuching <sighs> really is super busy. I'll meet you when I am done. How many times have we heard that already? Now Paimon gets why Lady Ningguang is so worried about Kuching. If she keeps working like this, she really will miss the lantern right. Oh, yeah! We said we would meet him! And we've even collected a few opinions about taking a rest from work. Zhang Li said he'd wait for us at third round knockout. Let's go find him! Hey! Is that who Paimon thinks it is? Yes, you are quite right. I shall take your wise words to heart, sir. They will certainly be most helpful in my next performance. You are welcome, Miss Yun. Your willingness to hear suggestions is indeed impressive. It's no wonder your opera performance has only been getting better. No, I'm afraid that's not always the case. Though I am still young, I can be quite arrogant at times. I do not always accept advice so readily, but your wisdom has spoken to me. Zhang Li! We're back! Ah, you've returned. Hmm? You are also acquaintances? Yes, we sure are! Not everyone gets the privilege of meeting someone so knowledgeable and discreet as Mr. Zhang Li. You are indeed well-connected, Traveler. I am flattered, Miss Yun. It is an honor for an ordinary person like myself to have met the Traveler. Wow. Did he really just say that? I'm sure you must have matters to discuss. I have an appointment with Xinyan, so if you'll excuse me, I'll take my leave. Very well. Goodbye, Miss Yun. See you around, Yunjin! So, tell me, what have you learned from your trip? Hmm, I see. Well, Traveler, what do you make of all their opinions? Paimon already started creating her own story on the way here. The goal is to convince Kuching to rest more with just a simple story, right? If that's the case, then Paimon thinks we can use food as our theme. Think about it. Who doesn't like delicious food? And when it comes to eating, everyone has an opinion. It's the perfect angle for our story. <laughs> Paimon knows just what to write. Let's say there's a chef in Lua who's very talented at cooking. He opens a massive restaurant in Liyue Harbor, and lots of customers come every day, so he's always super busy. Then... Uh, well... Uh, mm, how should the story go from there? Ooh, that's good! Uh, but wait! Didn't we say he's really good at cooking? That wouldn't make sense. There's no need to jump to the conclusion. Why don't you elaborate more on the chef? More about the chef? You mean both good and bad things? Yes. To gain one's empathy, there must be familiarity. I would like to understand this chef character of ours a little deeper. For. Uh, why don't you take it from here? Since you've spoken with others familiar with Kuching, why don't we integrate their thoughts into your story? That will allow it to become all the more convincing. Um, okay. Let Paimon think. Hmm, what did Cloud Retainer say? As one sows, so do they reap. And the joy of reaping is what one yearns for. <laughs> that was quite poetic, Paimon. Bravo. <laughs> oh, 
Now, Paimon remembers? Cloud Retainer said that if she spends all her efforts working on a machine with no time to test the outcome, then she'd be like a chef who doesn't get to try their own food. Problems are bound to pop up. Yes. It is most unwise to put the cart before the horse. Uh-huh. That's exactly what she said. So, let's make that happen to the chef in the story. He's great at cooking, but he can't enjoy his own food. Hmm. But there must be a reason why he doesn't partake in the delicacies he makes. Right! It's because he's super busy! He receives the customers, he takes the orders, and he does all the cooking himself. <laughs> that should keep him busy enough. He's so busy every day that he doesn't even have time to take a break, which obviously also means he doesn't have time to eat! Hey, it's just a story. Besides, it's supposed to leave a powerful impression. Kind of like fireworks. Yes. The chef is unwilling to delegate tasks to others. He's overconfident about his own cooking abilities and tries to accomplish everything on his own. Paimon already kind of feels sorry for him. Oh, right! That's what the chef doesn't understand. And... There's another saying. Um, what was it again? Oh, yeah! A rested worker is an efficient worker. That's what Yanfei said. So, the chef gets busier and busier to the point where he can't stand up straight anymore and he has big, dark circles under his eyes. The customers tell him to take a few days off to get some rest. But the chef won't listen! His judgment is clouded by the chores before him. He is oblivious to mountains in the distance, the bigger picture. Eventually, the chef falls ill, and his cooking becomes far worse than when he started. The customers can't convince him to rest, and they don't like his cooking anymore. So they stop coming to his restaurant. Rest is always of great importance. Although we may come across various difficulties in our lives, pushing ourselves is never a good modus operandi. The story is quite simple, without embellishment, yet deeply meaningful. If our listener is sensible, then she should quickly grasp the meaning contained within. You're saying Paimon made a good story? Sincerity can allow one to see clearly and earnest advice can provide sound direction. The story is indeed good. The Yuhang is an adroit leader. I am certain she will understand the message you are trying to convey. Really? Score one for Paimon! Given that the case involving the treasure hoarders has come to an end, she is inevitably tired. Now will be the ideal moment to speak with her. If all goes well, I think your story will be a success. Hear that? Zhang Li says Paimon's story has what it takes. If anyone knows a good story, he does. Quick, let's go find Kuching. Oh there. Come and see these rare and precious The matter has finally come to an end, but we mustn't lower our guard. Increase patrols around Chingsa Village and coordinate our people at other fireworks locations to prevent any further theft. Yes, Lady Kuching. And by the way, the Ministry has requested the Millilith to increase security along travel routes. How is that proceeding? It's all been taken care of. However, due to various reasons, there are still some blind spots in the city. Have we drafted a new patrol map? Please, give me a copy and I'll look it over when I have time. Understood. The patrol map is still being drafted, but it will be ready soon. Okay. Also, I... Oh, excuse me, Lady Kuching? Your friends are here. Hi, Kuching! Still working? Aren't we going to see the fireworks? Oh, 
Yes, but I thought we'd meet at the Jade Chamber. Why have you come here? Yeah, we walked around the city just like you told us to. It's very nice. But it would be even nicer if you could join us. Do you still have work to do? It's nothing urgent, really. Just some trivial matters. But I wish to get it done as soon as possible. You can leave it to us, Lady Kuching. You've been working hard for a long time, so you should get some rest. If I'm not mistaken, the Traveler is here to remind you to take a break. That's right! Something so important that we must speak with you personally, right now! Oh, really? In that case... Jingcheng, I'll let you take charge. Thank you. Understood. I'll handle things from here. <sighs> Traveler and Paimon, let's go to the Jade Chamber. The view there is nicer, and it's much more private. Perfect for talking. Well, here we are. What was it you wanted to talk about? Yeah, we want to tell you a story from this beautiful view. What do you say? All right, I'm listening. So it turns out we just heard some big news in Tevat. A very talented chef is in trouble. Oh, is the chef from Liyue? From Liyue Pavilion or Shinua Kiosk, perhaps? No, no, uh, the chef is from Mondstadt, yeah, and he's really, really good. He had a restaurant right next to the city gate. He was super efficient, and his cooking was really delicious. So his restaurant had been getting more and more popular. In fact, he became so busy that the worker from the florist next door asked him, Sir, why don't you find someone to help you in the restaurant? But the chef brushed the idea aside, saying that he's the only one that can turn top quality ingredients into world-class dishes. No one could help him. Hmm. Well, confidence is an essential trait for a good chef. He must be an excellent cook. That's what everyone was saying. But surprisingly, after just six months, no one would dine in his restaurant anymore. Hmm? Shocking, right? Do you have any guess why? Hmm. Maybe the chef had fallen ill, or... Wrong answer! You tell her, Traveler! Ding, ding, ding! Yep, it's because the chef was too stubborn. He would keep himself busy every day and try to make the most delicious dishes for all his guests. But he forgot that he's only human and needs time to eat and rest! He was so busy that he didn't even have time to eat and couldn't even taste his own cooking. He was unwilling to seek help, even when he's tired, because he thought he's the only one capable of cooking the best dishes. Eventually, the people around him felt like they couldn't help him anyway, so they just left. And because he had forgotten the original taste of his dishes, he was no longer a good chef. In the end, his restaurant had no choice but to close for good. Uh, oh. I see. He's overly confident, which disappoints the people around him, and he's so impatient that he ends up losing sight of his original purpose. <sighs> so, that's the whole story? Oh, um, yep, that's the whole thing. Didn't you just say that Paima made a great story? Hmm. Hmm? Did you come up with that story? Oh, uh, no. We just... Uh... <laughs> hmm. How should I describe it? The story is very simple, and I suppose the ending isn't really surprising. Think before you act and don't overexert yourself. Of course, I understand these concepts in theory, but when tasks come to me personally, it is easy to lose sight of the bigger picture. 
Yes. Up in the mountains, we can see the mist and the clouds. Out in the ocean, we can see fog and the sea. That's why, from time to time, we need to examine where we are, remove the fog, and feel our heart. So, how do you feel now, Kuching? How do I feel? Hmm. Deep down inside, I wish I could slow down time. That way, I could finally take the opportunity to walk around the city, see the people I wish to see, and watch the fireworks. Thinking back, I used to be even more impatient. My colleagues would resign after just three months of working with me. You're completely right. It's important to know your boundaries. Uh, but I am getting better. You can tell, can't you? And... I did make a promise with you, didn't I? We agreed to enjoy the fireworks show together this year. So... Happy Lantern Rite, Traveler and Paimon. I'm very happy to be here and enjoy this moment together with you. I've poured all my best effort into this fireworks show. And now that we're here, I sincerely hope you will enjoy it. I feel very fortunate to be right here, enjoying the fireworks and enjoying the view of Liu Harbor. Happy Lantern Right. <laughs> Happy Lantern right? and thank you. Kuching, the item Lady Ningguang prepared for you has arrived. Traveler, wait here for a moment. Don't go anywhere. Huh? Must be something important. Traveler, Paimon? Huh? Ningguang had her personal tailor make it for me. Said it's an imported style. Well, do you like it? Wow, it's beautiful! <laughs> it's time. Traveler, please enjoy the grand finale of this year's Lantern Rite. The fireworks show. Check you out. Looking pretty fancy. Only a true treasure catches the eye of Captain Beto. Seems I've struck gold with this one. Better way to celebrate. 
Dr. Baiju, sorry to trouble you again this year. <laughs> no trouble at all. Lantern right. <laughs> Happy Lantern right. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Happy Lantern right. <laughs> 